said there'll be snow at Christmas. Hello there and welcome back to my channel. My name is Doug and I have another fountain pen video for you today. Uh, this is something very special. This is not so much a review as uh, an examination of a vintage fountain pen. I was very fortunate. I am very fortunate to have a friend who's very much into fountain pens. He's actually the reason uh, that I got into this thing about a year ago. And uh, I was at his place the other day and he showed me his entire collection, not of just his fountain pens, but of his father's fountain pens that uh, his father had passed on to him. And uh, he just said, well, take, you know, take what you want for loan, of course. I was like a kid in a candy store. I grabbed this and I grabbed that. And so I'm going to do a series of videos over the next uh, number of weeks that focus on these vintage fountain pens from uh, my friend's collection. Uh, this is one of his father's pens, and this is a pen and pencil set. This is the Parker 45. What I'm going to do with these pens as I look at them, uh, many of them haven't been used in years, and so I'm going to uh, clean them up. And uh, I've got to give credit to Chris Rapp here because I've devoured his videos on how to uh, clean and restore vintage fountain pens. And I'm trying to be very careful just to make sure that we make these right. Um, that's W R I. T-E, not uh, R-I-G-H-T, but get them to a point where they will write, but that I'm not um, ruining them. Like this, for example, has a gold plating on it. I don't want to polish it to the point where I lose the gold plating. Uh, I want to get the old ink out and things like that, so I am polishing up barrels. So I spent some time, instead of cleaning out a new pen, I spent a, a good deal of time over the last uh, couple of days, um, not restoring this pen, but getting it back into working shape. So uh, I want to go over uh, this pen a little bit with you, uh, these two. This is a set. There was no case with this, uh, but this is the Parker 45, and this would be a pen and pencil set. And this would be, I'm guessing that this is from the 60s. Uh, into late 60s, something like that. So this is a Parker 45. It came with this, a little booklet from the original pen. It shows you how to insert a cartridge and how to um, extend the mechanical pencil and replace the lead and so forth. How to fill from a bottle and what inks to use and so forth. So this is a vintage piece right here. As you can see, this was printed in Canada. Um, the pens are marked made in the USA, Parker. And this is a dark gray. The Parker 45 has an interesting history, and uh, as I look into it, Parker has an interesting history of naming their pens. Uh, there is a Parker 51, which predates the Parker 45, and you say, well, how, how does that work with model numbers and things like that? Well, it sounds like they, they like naming their pens for special dates and special numbers. Uh, this one has to do with uh, the popularity of westerns in the early 60s and uh, how the uh, Colt 45 was a, was a western cowboy's uh, gun that could be easily loaded. And so the idea behind this one was that you could easily load it with cartridges. So uh, I'm going to do a little bit of um, a section on history on this pen, but I'm going to show you sort of a an overview of what I've done to the pen. I haven't got any photos or anything. I got eager and I, I started cleaning up the pen right away. So I didn't take any po uh, photos of it when it was uh, encrusted with ink and so forth. But I've taken some photos of how to take the nib out. Let's take a look at this nib. Again, the pen posts very nicely. And there's that really interesting. This is a 14 karat gold. Uh, I'm not sure what it is. I think it's a medium. I have not inked this up yet, so I don't know. Um, 
but I show, um, I have a little insert here that I'm going to show uh, taking this nib out and how the nib goes together with the feed. And uh, this is a, one of those uh, aerometric converters. I think the converter was added afterwards because this one is marked Japan. Um, but this is a cartridge converter pen and it will take, uh, of course, Parker cartridges. So I'll show you that, uh, that video I did when I was taking the pen apart and then we'll come back and look at the parts and features of this pen and then I'm going to ink it up and do a writing sample. So here is the 14K gold nib on this Parker 45. I uh, left it in water and soaked it in water overnight and uh, then I cleaned it up and it unscrews here and there's the it's not really a feed there's a little bit of ink still left on there it's uh, like a channel and you can push this collar back and it releases the gold nib there it is. It says 14K Parker, made in the USA. And I polished this up with uh, some 12,000 uh, micro mesh, both sides. And they're very tiny, so they're, you have to get these uh, hooks lined up properly so that the collar goes back on. Then it just slides right back into the channel. There's, a, and you screw it shut, there's a, uh, an ink collector inside that uh, section that seems to be glued in. Here's the rest of the body. Now I polished the body up with some Meguiar's uh, special polish. It's a swirl remover. And here is the uh, converter it's a uh, aerometric now this is made in Japan so I'm thinking this was uh, a replacement for this pen because the pen is made in USA and here's a look at the cap now this is just gold plated, so I was very careful when I was polishing this up not to go through that gold plating. But it's uh, this lovely ribbed design. It says Parker on the one side of the cap, and then on the back it says Made in the USA, and then there's a Parker logo above that. And it's that clutch fit. It came out very nicely. I'm very pleased with the results. Now we'll put some ink in it and see if it writes. If you're new to fountain pen history as I am, you'd be forgiven if you thought incorrectly as I did that the Parker 45 was older than the Parker 51. Logic would seem to indicate that Parker named their models sequentially with the Parker 21, 45, 51, 61, 75, and 180. What has logic got to do with it? This is advertising. The Parker 45 was introduced in 1960 and the last 45s were produced by Parker in 2008. So where did the 45 come from? Well, we need to look at the history of popular culture. And yes, this is popular culture that predates the Kardashians. 
In the late 50s through the 60s, westerns were very popular in books, movies, and television with Zane Gray, John Wayne, and Roy Rogers. The Colt 45, the weapon, Colt 45, not the beer, was a cultural icon, and Parker seized on that to name their new cartridge fountain pen the 45. It could be reloaded as quickly as Chuck Connors' funky rifle. The Rifleman! Starring Chuck Connors. The Parker 45 design, like many pen designs throughout history, as we are learning, wasn't invented out of whole cloth, but purchased through the acquisition of Eversharp in 1957, kind of the way Bill Gates acquired QDOS from Tim Patterson in 1981 and sold it to IBM while Gary Kildall was flying around in his private plane, but I digress. The Parker 45 was sleek and made from plastic, so it was inexpensive. You notice I didn't say cheap. The selling price was $5, which is about $40 in today's money. The 45 had a new nib design that allowed users to change it out for a variety of different available nibs. It was a cheap pen to produce and became very popular and a great success for Parker. They expanded the available finishes and even added more upscale models in silver and rolled gold. As I mentioned, Parker no longer makes the 45, having ceased production in 2008. There are Chinese homage pens that look to replicate the 45, however, like the recent Moonman M80 and the Hero 800. And then we get into the controversy about Chinese knockoffs. Again, the history is more interesting than you'd think. Frank Underwater has a great article on the cooperation between the Hero Pen Company and Parker Pen Company, which resulted in the Hero 800 and ultimately, you might say, the Moon Man 80. The short story is that in the late 70s, Parker sought to partner with the Chinese pen company Hero to produce the Parker 45 out of China. A number of tests were made by the Hero Company using Parker-supplied specifications and methods. After months of negotiations and successful tests, Parker withdrew from the project without giving any reasons. Parker apologized to the Chinese for the suspension of the project and showed its appreciation for not being charged by the Chinese for the initial batch of pens produced by giving Hero the related products, mold blueprints, and processing technology files as a gift by way of compensation. The Shanghai Hero Pen Company produced their 800 and 616 model fountain pens using the technology and design gifted them by the Parker Pen Company. Hero has a number of brand trademarks, including Wing Song Lucky, Huafu, Jinming, Guanliming, Jinhua, and Gentleman. It is no surprise that parts of Chinese pens made today fit perfectly into a Parker 45 made in the 1960s. See the link in the description to Chris Rapp's video on the comparison of the Moon Man 80 with the Parker 45, where he makes a Franken pen out of parts of each of them. Fascinating video. And thanks to Chris for all of his videos. A terrific resource for a novice like me. So let's look at uh, the parts and features of this pen. Um, this particular one is made of injection molded plastic. Uh, it has a very, very streamlined, slim shape. It has the classic Parker clip, which is uh, fairly springy. And this is a ribbed gold cap. I'm not sure that it's gold plated. It doesn't say gold plated anywhere. Um, it might be gold paint for all I know. The finial has an indent and the bottom of the body has a little indent as well. And then you can see that where the injection molding takes place. One of the thing about these Parkers that's so lovely is they post so beautifully. And they're elegant in the hand. And with that very tapered tip, you can, and an extended section, you can write with it anywhere. Um, these are designed as workhorses, and as I understand it, these 
these 45s were considered like student pens, work pens. And I think they ran until about 2008 when they made the last one. So about 1960 to 2008, they made uh, a ton of these pens. The nib, as you've just seen, is removable. And those nib assemblies uh, came in little packages. And you can get a variety of different nibs for your uh, Parker 45 uh, for relatively cheap. Of course, the matching pencil has the same look. It's uh, slightly smaller, and it works by turning the cap, and it extends a lead when you do that. And to replace the leads, you turn it until it clicks, and I believe it sends a rod all the way down here to push the lead out. You put the new lead in and crank it back up into the body. If you remove the cap, there is an eraser, and you could have you could replace that eraser but unlike more modern uh, lead holders uh, you don't insert the leads in the back like that okay, so let's go ahead and ink this pen up I'm going to use uh, Eroshizuku Asagao for this a nice bright blue so I'm going to take the cap off take the body off and then we're going to dip the nib and give this, as the uh, Parker saying goes, four squeezes and see how we do. So again, I haven't tested this and I don't think this pen has been tested in 20, 30 years. So we'll see how we do. Mm, got bubbles. Feels like it's filling. The uh, nib was very tarnished, and and the feed was encrusted with ink, and I let it sit for a full day in water, and flushed it a number of times, and then took it apart and then polish that nib. Okay, so we are inked up and we'll go to camera two for the writing sample. Here we are back with the Parker 45 and ready for our writing sample. is the Parker 45. I'm guessing this is a fine nib, but it is 14 karat gold. The ink is a Roshizuku. Ago. And let's check the wetness on this pen here. Not extremely wet. There's not a lot of bounce in this pen. Certainly there's more than a pen BBS nib. Uh, but this is very smooth. And let's listen to it. very pleasant. It is a small pen, very streamlined, uh, and that restricted nib, the, the size of it, 
would mean to me that it's not going to bounce a lot, even though it's a 14K uh, gold nib. But uh, it's very light pen and very comfortable in the hand. You can write with it unposted. It's just as comfortable. You, you can push a little bit of line variation out of it. Let's see, reverse. It's very scratchy. I can hardly write with it. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. As I understand it, these pens were introduced in uh, 1960 and they stopped making them in 2008. And I think this one is circa, let's say, 1960 to uh, 70, somewhere in there. I'm just guessing. Maybe someone who knows these pens can tell me. Uh, this is one of the original colors that came out in 1960, the dark gray. Um, so it's possible that it's from the early days. Um, I'm not sure about the gold cap when that came out. But it's a very light, very serviceable, very comfortable pen to write with. And I'm very grateful to my friend for allowing me to try this pen out. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when more videos come along. We've got other pens coming along. Okay. That will be very interesting. And one of the things I'm just going to just briefly show this just for a second. Now I'm going to work on that one. That's a very special set. So again, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.